Welcome to another segment, The Northmen. A great movie that I've already done a couple reaction videos on so far. Um, a lot of you may have seen this uh, movie in theaters already. It's a classic tale of the young prince having his father killed by his uncle and then returning as an adult for revenge, aka Shakespeare's Hamlet, aka Lion King, and lots more stories. But the origin, and the first one of all these, is actually an old Viking saga as told in books 3 and 4 of Gesta Danurum, a chronicle from the Middle Ages. And uh, this story is what the movie is loosely based on. Um, there are some key differences. If you still haven't watched watch the movie. Um, there are going to be some spoilers in this video, so you can wait till after you watch it if you want to, but in this video I'm going over basically the full summary of the original uh, story and some interesting spiritual things that you won't be able to read or hear about anywhere else. So, this story, originally told in the medieval chronicle, um, Gesta Danorum by Saxo Grammaticus. Um, problem is, first, um, like most of the other sagas in, uh, from the Viking Age, um, the sagas and chronicles we have are written in the 1200s, which is a couple hundred years after most of these events happened. An even bigger problem is that this particular saga, Gesta Danorum, is probably the number one uh, biggest bunch of bullshit <laughs> out of all the sagas and chronicles in the Viking Age. It's the number one least reliable source and tons of things that have proven to be lies and over-exaggerations in this source, especially about the pagan religion and the history um, that Saxo wrote about, uh, having a strong distaste for his pagan ancestors, basically. And that's more than most other sources that we have. In fact, he didn't even want to write this book in the first place. He only did so because he was asked by the king to write the story of Danish history and no one else wanted to write the story basically. And yes, in the very first uh, chapter or two of that book he actually admits that himself while he's writing this. As a matter of fact the only thing that kind of gives this story uh, Umleth, uh, what the Northman is based on, any credibility at all, is that a similar story is told in the 12th century Chronicon which is generally believed to be a reliable source and there's a couple other sources of the Viking Age that are that kind of tell a quick version of this tale but, but yeah if you do want to read Gesta Danorum and what the Northmen is based on you can get it it's a very detailed uh, story and it's still valuable in very many ways it's the whole source is quite valuable still but if you're going to buy this book please 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 get the one with notes from Hilda Ellis Davidson. She is by far my favorite scholar to ever write about uh, Norse history and religion. She has more knowledge than anyone I have ever seen writing books about this stuff. Unfortunately, she passed away um, not that long ago, but her works still remain with us forever, and she teamed up on this book to give notes uh, where you were fine almost in every single paragraph of this whole book you'll find her thoughts and knowledge about the accuracy in every little detail. And you really need this. You really need the guide of an expert if you're going to read this source because it is so unreliable. So links to those will be below in the description. Anyway, on to the story. It's not a long one. Um, it's only a total of about 60, 70 pages, I think. I'm just summarizing the main plot, um, but I will stop and go into detail in some parts because this is the Norse Spirituality Channel overall, uh, and I will be giving some bonus info on that. There was once a chieftain in Jutland, uh, in Denmark, called Gervendil. He had two sons, that was Horvendil and Feng. Horvendil was the greater warrior of the two brothers. He was renowned and he ended up a hero and he ended up marrying the Danish king's daughter Gerutha. And, and these names, by the way, they're all kind of weird and they're listed as different names in different places. I'm just reading kind of the ones from uh, Gesta Danorum, but r realize there are many different versions of these names depending on the source. So Hoivendil becomes king of Denmark and they have a son named Amleth. These are the characters that you know from the movie. The names are different in the movie, of course, and the medieval sources, but yeah, you get the point. They're all close enough. Now, we have to stop there. When we look at these types of things, um, it makes us question the reliability of this source again. So, very often in the medieval sources, the Christian writers would take 
folk tales or mythological figures, even gods, and portray them as humans as a way to Christianize the pagans that were still pagan in like the 1200s. They changed the myths and they said, ah, oh, look, the god you worship, Odin and Thor and all this, he was just a regular human. <laughs> a shitty human at that, because they write about these gods in a, a, a bad way. So then they say, oh, why do, why do you worship these gods? Why don't you accept our god as your lord and savior? And this is a possible example of that, of course. So, Eruvendil is a figure in Norse mythology that got a frostbite on his toe, and Thor had to rip it off, and he threw it up in the sky, and that is uh, said to be the brightest star. Uh, I think it's Venus. Uh, I remember reading that. I'm not sure if we know completely which one, but yeah, I think it's uh, Venus. Um, of course, that myth by itself is has some very cool symbolism in it uh, that I won't go into today, but yeah, Eovendil is basically, his name means beam of light, um, so we don't know if this was a real human's name, uh, but we do find uh, cognates of this in various Germanic language, so there is a good chance that this was a real person. He was just named after a figure in the uh, Norse myths. Then we have his brother Feng, which is not really a name we find attested in other Norse sources. We have, you know, similar names um, that were probably the original, but in the movie, uh, Feng was called Fjölnir, and that was Amlet's uncle, who you all know. And Fjölnir was actually one of the many names for Odin that was used in the sources, one of his nicknames. Uh, Gerutha, or as Nicole Kidman was cast in the movie, as Gudrun, also a mythological uh, character, but definitely a common used name in Scandinavia forever. And then, of course, we have the main character, Amleth, uh, or one of its ma many related attestations. But basically, Amleth in Old Norse means the dumbass, <laughs> like the village idiot. Uh, nobody would have named their child that, okay? Uh, but it could have very well developed into a nickname that was uh, exactly what this real human being was called, and I'll tell you exactly why in a second. But yeah, funny names like this and, you know, mythological names, it kind of gives the impression that this could be a folk tale uh, type thing and uh, not historical. And really kind of the only thing in this story that kind of uh, makes us sure that it was a real event, or at least based on real events, was um, the Danish king uh, Hurdek, uh, because he is mentioned in plenty of other reliable sources at different times, though sometimes he's attested as being a king of Denmark in the late 800s, uh, at the time the movie is actually set in, uh, but more likely uh, the original uh, king Hurdek was uh, in the 500s, like some sources suggest. I think um, it was more likely set in the 500s uh, originally uh, because this kind of this story reads kind of like Beowulf um, uh, and that was from around this same time and also other countries mentioned in here don't quite line up with the other sources. For example if it was the late 800s we would have heard of the Norwegian king Harald Fairhair in this story or the English king Athelstan but they are nowhere to be found in Gesta Danorum so yeah, I think the original story was supposed to be in the 500s. Okay, getting way too nerdy now. I'm going to lose some of you, so on to the finishing the story. So later on, King Hoedvendil becomes the Danish king. His brother Feng kills him, and he takes over the throne, and he takes his wife Gerutha, the queen. So the movie got that exactly right. But Feng, or Fjölnir in the movie... Uh, tries to kill Amleth, the young Amleth, but the original story goes that Amleth uh, was kept alive, he was living there, his uncle wanted to kill him, but Amleth purposely acts like a dumbass. <laughs> he acts like the village idiot on purpose to make Feng think that he's stupid and that he's not a threat. And that part is actually different than in the movie. Although, when Amleth comes back as a slave, he does act like kind of a dumbass that doesn't talk, so that kind of gets it a little bit right there, too. That goes on for a while, and they go back kind of playing mind games with each other, trying to expose him as not being a dumbass and trying to hide it and, and uh, back talk. You know the story if you've seen Hamlet. Uh, I think for uh, years that went on, until eventually Fang had had enough of Amleth, and he sent him to England to be killed, because he couldn't kill himself in Denmark. What would people do if the king tried to kill his former enemy king's mentally handicapped son who was no threat? So he had to send him to England. So 
what Feng did was send Amlet uh, to England with two servants and a note. And the note uh, was for the English king and was telling uh, the king to kill Amleth. But Amleth saw this note while they were on the trip to England. And while the servants were sleeping, Amleth wrote a different note requesting that the king uh, kill the servants who were accompanying him, and uh, he would have Amleth marry the English king's daughter, the princess. So that happened, and it worked out all well. Uh, Amleth was married to the English king's uh, daughter, and later that year, Amleth returned back to Denmark on the day that was supposed to be his funeral feast. Um, and he caught the king's men while they were asleep in the palace, and he ended up killing all of them, lighting it on fire, and he killed Feng with a sword. Um, so that that actually did kind of end up like the movie did with a blazing sword fight. So if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, the rest of the Northmen is quite different to the original story, as you can see if you've watched the movie. It's not done, though. Amleth then is declared King of Denmark at he uh, kills his uncle and then he goes back to England to meet with his wife and we find out that the English king and Amleth's uncle Feng were actually great friends and they had sworn oaths to each other to avenge uh, one another's death should that happen. The English king doesn't have the balls to kill Amleth uh, to his face so he sent Amleth to Scotland to woo the Scottish princess for him knowing well that the Scottish queen had killed everyone uh, that was sent there to speak about a marriage. But the Scottish queen ended up falling in love with Amleth uh, instead and they got married too so Amleth went back to to England and he was actually told by his first wife after he had married the Scottish uh, princess too he told all about her father's plans the English king and then Hamlet was like oh yeah, awesome dear. I got two wives now and they're into it they're both loyal to me so uh, he waged a war and battle against the English king knowing all this and he won the battle and he was kind of effectively in control of England uh, too at that point and he had two beautiful wives Life was good. Uh, he eventually goes back to Denmark where a successor of his grandfather Hörik um, uh, was one that took the throne of Denmark while he was away and then finally they fought and Amleth was killed and that's the end of the story as told in Gesta Danurum. Like I mentioned uh, before, Kronikon uh, Lesense, um, uh, another sorcerer from around the same time, tells a less detailed version of the story, but it's close enough, um, so that's it, pretty much. You can believe it if you want. Like a lot of these stories that take place before the Viking Age especially, it's not possible to say if it was true or not. Uh, we call these the legendary sagas at the end of the day. These are like uh, the tales about the Jagnar, uh, the uh, Völsunga saga, these types of things. Yeah, they are told like they are real events and some real figures, but it's you know definitely not all based on reality. But in the later Viking Age, we actually have a lot more accurate records of real stories that happen. But early Viking Age and pre-Viking Age, like Vendelera, we really don't know. Uh, there, there definitely are some real historical figures in there that really lived and real events that happened. We know this, but it's also filled with folktale type stuff. So believe it if you want. I will say, though, um, this whole story of Amleth, uh, as told in the Northmen 2, it bears a big resemblance to the story about the origins of Rome, actually, and how it was founded. This is more than a thousand years before the Amleth story was said to take place. It's almost too much of a coincidence um, for it to be two separate stories, actually. So it's maybe possible that the whole story of brother killing uh, brother and then the son avenging by killing the uncle, that it's a common Indo-European theme that goes back thousands of years when we were all one people. And, you know, over the ages and places, the names and the characters um, and, and the events uh, slightly change in the story. But originally it's the same story that probably goes back which again leads me to believe that uh, this is not a real event that happened but uh, uh, perhaps a folk tale but that's all I have to say for today hope you enjoyed um, if you haven't seen the movie I definitely recommend you check it out in theaters because you know the just for the sound and the effects it's really really cool beautiful movie um, and worth seeing um, and yeah of course if you want to see the original story I read that that link will be down below in the description but uh, that's all I have to say for today. We see us next time.